Good morning and thank you for joining us at A Place of Faith. My name is Becky R. And today our talk is about the spiritual principle of light, how we are beings of light, how we can use our light in our life, and how we remember to shine our light. So let's begin with prayer. Higher Power, we are grateful for your presence in our lives. We're grateful for our being here today, for sharing the words, your words, as they come through, and for our, the understanding in our lives that we are beings of light in and through you, and that your words shine through us to help us become stronger and to be better beings of who we are, to end in our unfoldment of ourselves, we know that our light can shine out and guide others to your path as well. And for this, we say, thank you, God. Amen. You know, I was listening to the station with the kids one day, and a popular song came on. And for a long time, um, I love these lyrics and I thought I would share just a piece of the chorus and it's a song by the popular artist Rihanna. I hope I'm saying her name right. And in the chorus part of this song it says, turn your face towards the sun, let the shadows fall behind you. Don't look back, just carry on and the shadows will never find you. I love that. Turn your face towards the sun. The statement makes so much sense on more than one level. Okay, If you just talk about depression and weather, it's a scientific fact that a sunny day may do more to boost our moods in, in, and increase our levels of natural antidepressant in the brain. You know, there's been more and more science about this lately that just being out in the day, having sun. So studies, these studies, some of these studies way, date way back, but more recent in like 2000, the early 2000s, 2003, 2005, they began to explain how the brain produces more mood lifting chemicals, serotonin, we all know the serotonin, right, receptors, on sunny days than it does on darker ones. And it's long time been note that people have seasonal affective disorders. So that's, I mean, people buy lights nowadays. You can get them on Amazon. You can get a light where you can sit in front of the light and it can simulate sunlight for you, uh, especially in areas where there isn't a lot of light. I noticed that that is what happens with me. So for what, when I was growing up, I grew up in Central California and in the valley of Fresno, Fresno Valley, there was a lot of fog during winter months. And we would go sometimes days without the sun. And the more time between me being able to see the sun and being able to feel it on my face, the more I became depressed, the more subdued I was, the less I wanted to do things, the more I wanted to curl up and just watch TV after I got off work or or, you know, I mean, there's so many, it affects people in, in varying degrees. But for me, it was definitely an, an inability to keep going and have as much energy if I didn't see the sun, if I did not feel that warmth on my face. So now we can compare this to the sun, which is S-O-N instead of S-U-N, which is Christ, God, spirituality, our higher power, right? So all of these are very interchangeable, spirit, divinity. Uh, in the case of the sun, God, spirit, role, it can be said to the same, that if we put the shadows behind us and we face the sun, if I spend my time caught up in facing the high, my higher power, if I my first thought goes to my higher power, if my I'm struggling through the day and I realize, you know what, I haven't prayed in a while, I haven't meditated in a while, maybe I need to take the time to do that. I am facing that sun and all the other stuff can fall behind us. 
And, you know, it's kind of a fun little song. It says it can't harm us, which things can harm us. But it's the retrospective of what we allow, how much harm we allow it to have on us. It's what how we look at it in our day. And either way, if it's the sunlight or the Christ, it's all about where is our focus going? And thousands of not millions of people can tell you that the sun heals. Either one, right? And both. For me, it's both. For me, it's my higher power and it's the sunlight. I don't use them interchangeably, but you know, someone that may not feel that they are spiritually inclined may use nature. And being in nature is being in the sunlight, right? More often than not, we don't go hiking just because it's a bunch of rain. And I, I know this because when I drive down the hill from Ramona, I see a lot of hikers out when the sun is out. But when the rain and the fog is out, I don't see very many cars out there, right? I see a lot less cars. There are a few hardcore hard hikers. There are a few hardcore runners. I see them running in the rain too. I don't want to be one of them. I'm way past the running thing with the knees. But it's still at where we put our focus. So in the sun, we can see the sky's motion. The shadow is harder to see because it's behind us. In, in our lives, we can look at our higher power and those things that were bothering us are going to generally fall back here. And because they're not the center of our focus, they feel and have less effect on us, right? They feel like they have less effect and they do have less effect. So why do we choose to stand in the shadows? Why do we choose to not look towards the sun, the Christ, the higher power? Well, personally for me, I grew up for a long time feeling like I wasn't worthy. I was absolutely not worthy of being called God's child. Uh, I had no encouragement growing up. You know, adult child alcoholics, you know, you the chances of being encouraged when your parents are both alcoholics is very slim to none, you know. So with a lack of self-esteem, not feeling worthy, no encouragement, really to speak of, it was very difficult for me to figure out these things for myself. You know, we're talking about a lot of long, a lot of years ago too. We didn't have things like Facebook and TikTok and Instagram and all these things where all these coaches that are live and on videos and, and saying, hey, you know, life is better. Look for this, look for that. You know, we didn't have Tony Robbins when I was a kid. We didn't have a Jack Canfield. I mean, they were around, mind you, they're older than me. They weren't popular. They weren't um, in inspiring us. You know, Lisa Nichols, she wasn't inspiring us when I was a child. And nowadays, there's so many ways and so many people that have these inspirational people to look at. You know, one of the ones, like Michael Jordan, he's a, such an inspiration to kids out there. I know my son grew up with him as an inspiration. I know that Will Smith is an inspiration. I know that, I mean, there's just thousands of them now when, when I was a kid, they weren't there. You know, I did have a couple of teachers in my life that I felt tried to inspire me and their inspiration stuck. It was few and far between. I was in second grade, and my first teacher that I really, really connected with treated me like I was special. And I was in seventh grade when the next time I remembered having a teacher that treated me like I was special, like I was worthy, like I, uh, someone that encouraged me, someone that saw something in me that I did not see in myself. Another good question is why do we stay there? You know, why do we look at it and why do we stay there? Sometimes it gets comfortable. Uh, even though it's uncomfortable, it can still be a uncomfortable comfortable. Now let me explain that just a little bit. Sometimes it's hard to move past something you know you've grown accustomed. At least you know what to expect. I knew what to expect when my dad came home drunk. 
I knew what to expect when my mom and him would fight. Now, sometimes it was worse than others, but I knew what to expect, so it was comfortable. And it was comfortable walking into relationships like that because I knew what the battle was. I knew what my strategy was, and I knew what the battle was. Sometimes it can be fearful, fear of the unknown, of crossing into something greater, of actually taking that step forward and thinking, maybe I am worthy. No. And then something happens and you're I'm, I'm bolted right back into it. You know, trying to break away and, oh, wait, you know, that might not work out so well. So maybe I should just come back to where I'm at. Right? So another reason we might stay in there for fear of people are going to stop liking us. I know for me, my mother said it, I was the glue that held the family together. So I had my role. And in my role, I knew my place. And as long as I kept my, the, my family together, I, everything was cohesive. Things could get rocky, but we would all stay together. We were bound together. We were a tight family, you know, that fought a lot. But we, that was, that was mistaken for love. It was being the glue, right? So we needed to stay under the control of others because we weren't sure we could make choices for ourselves. That was another big one for me. If someone else dotted my I's and crossed my T's, one, I didn't have to take the blame for anything, right? Another one is, what am I supposed to do? They're the ones that make all the choices. So I didn't have, I mean, I could remain the victim. Essentially, I could remain the victim. And it was being done to me so we can get, I can get stuck in that, in that fear factor of, well, they're doing this to me, so I might as well just stay where I'm at. And if I stay quiet and I behave and I'm perfect, then somehow it might get better as soon as they know that I love them enough. So, right? As soon as they understand how much I love them, then it'll get better. That didn't work either, just in case you're wondering. Okay? I'm here, right? <laughs> how do we get rid of it? The bigger question is, how do we walk away from it? How do we face the sun and let the shadows fall behind us, right? We work at it. We practice it. We find what works and we use it and we use it and we use it until it becomes a pattern in our lives. It's our go-to method. We learn to move into it and keep going and keep going and before you know it it's automatic pilot another way get help is counseling uh if you're if someone is in a point where they just absolutely are feel powerless counseling helps it does i mean counseling can help before that but what i'm saying is that if you're really stuck feeling that that is you don't have any options left so you do because there's counseling and there is free counseling out there. So we do have some resources. You could always call the, the uh, Unity Church of El Cajon, their, their desk during the week and ask for the resources for mental health. They have a paper with resources on it. Plus we post them on our websites too. Get in a 12 step group. That's another way to face the sun because you will find God in a 12 step group. You'll find a lot of mirrors too. You'll find a lot of people that you, you're you not so sure you like because they mirror who you used to be or they mirror who you don't want to be. So you can find a variety. At the same time, the group helps because it's not about personalities. It's principles, okay? And it's progress. It's not about who's in the room. It's about getting the work done, okay? And I can't say enough for 12-step groups. I really can't. Um, there are many different kinds of them. I would say stick out one for at least six weeks before you decide whether or not you want to move on to something else. Some people I feel like give up too early. And I would say try more than one. Find your home group. And if you grow outgrow your home group, that's okay too. If you outgrow your sponsor, that's okay too because that's what they're there for. Sometimes... Not everybody's moving at the same speed. 
And sometimes we move past our sponsors or sometimes they finally just say, you know what, you're not listening and I'm going to let you go. You know, so it can be either way or sometimes they don't face the sun and they fall back into the shadows, right? Lots of books. There's more books today than there ever was. Don't believe everything you read, except please read. Educate yourself on addiction. Educate ourselves on numbing. Educate ourselves on being better people. Because nowadays there's no reason. There's podcasts, there's uh, websites, there's free coaching, there's, you know, all, all these t top 10 uh lists and Pinterest and everything where you can find out all kinds of information and get in and do it. Okay. Practice. A spiritual practice is essential. A spiritual practice turning towards God, turning towards the higher power, turning towards nature, turning towards hiking, turning, turning toward whatever it is you call your connection to your higher power. And nobody says anybody has to call it God. Okay? So let's not hold on to that word. It's just a word. For me, it's a word that works. For, some, for many, it doesn't. And that's okay. Because it's the principle behind it. It is that power greater than ourselves that with that power, with me looking towards that power, I can find my healing. I can release and let go of my past. I can stop numbing. I can ask for forgiveness. I can give forgiveness. And I can practice these principles in all the areas of my life. Because I'm willing to accept that there's that power that can help me. That spiritual practice. And it is a practice. It's not like you go, oh yeah, I've been in... I've been going to this church for 10 years. I should be good. You know, I can stop meditating for a week and realize the difference. I can stop praying every morning and every night for a week and notice the difference. And that's not because I feel like I'm any more spiritual than anybody else out there. It's because I notice when I'm off center. When I have an imbalance is when I think I'm the one in control. Because I'm not. I know my higher power is in control. And I know my higher power has put me right here, right now. And you're listening right here and right now because your higher power is saying, hey, listen. You have me, rely on me, find your steps, start working them, and have a better life. Right? So I've been in recovery for a long time and I've learned a lot of great tools. It takes time. And it can be so frigging uncomfortable at times. But when it gets uncomfortable, remembering not to turn back into the shadow is essential. Remembering to pick up the phone and make a call. That's one of the reasons people relapse is because of the comfort level. Okay? When it gets uncomfortable, we want to numb. We can, I'm, I'm a master, I can switch from any addiction. Chocolate is an addiction, you know. I can make chocolate, my, my God, you know, because, oh, it's going to solve the problem for as long as it's on my lips and on my tongue. And then there's going to be a problem again. But not only is there that, now I've eaten six, seven hundred calories of chocolate. And the sugar shot through the roof. Which, you know, with the history of my family, I don't want to head down that road. I want to live a long life. So, when we find ourselves in discomfort, it's that never be too hungry, too angry, too lonely, or too tired, right? There's more of them. Reaching that point of discomfort, realizing, oof, this is, you know, maybe I'm off balance. Maybe I have been praying every single day. Maybe I have been keeping going. Maybe everything's been, but then there's still this level of discomfort. It can happen. What do we do? We keep our face out of those shadows. We find someone to call. We find a meeting to go to. We find a podcast to listen to. We find a book to pick up. We find a friend to go out and talk with. We take a hike. We do whatever we have to do. Whatever is it that feeds our spirit. 
and we do it, right? So many years ago, I read this poem by Marianne Williamson, and I love this. I have to actually read it to you, okay? Our Deepest Fear by Marianne Williamson. Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. We ask, we ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, and fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of God. Your playing small does not serve this world. There's nothing enlightening about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. We are all meant to shine as children do. We were born to make manifest the glory of God that is within us. It is not just in some of us. It is in everyone. And as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. As we are liberated from our own fears, our presence automatically liberates others. I love that poem. So why don't we keep our face towards the sun, the Christ, our higher power, let our shadows fall behind us and shine our light so that others know that they can shine theirs. You know that one single candle can light a thousand candles and never lose its flame. Never lose its flame. Be the light. Share your light. Someone in your life is waiting for permission to light their candle and to let it shine. And you can be the light on their path and they can light their path of another. Let us begin our meditation. I invite you to sit comfortably somewhere you will not be disturbed. We are meditating on the healing light of God's love. Our affirmation today is, I stand here and remember that I too am being of pure light, love and joy, truth and beauty, grace and gratitude. Breathing in and out slowly, releasing any other noise you hear, listening only to this voice, the voice of God, from inside you, you go deeper into yourself. You are connecting to the presence of God within yourself and all around you, breathing in light, exhaling light, you are all made of the purest light of God. Bask in the glorious light as it enters your body. Through your breath, you feel the warmth of light, love, friendship, compassion, empathy, the Christ nature flowing in and through you. Rest in this loving naturing light for a few moments. You are love. 
You are friendship. You are compassion. You are empathy. You are Christ's nature. Rest in this for a few moments as I read Reiki Prayer of Light. Creator, Infant Spirit, Mother, Father, Divine, we are here before you as instruments of peace and healing and we offer ourselves as servants of the light. We call upon only the highest and most sacred spiritual to be with us, to guide us, to share love, healing, and wisdom with us. We send them our love and we welcome them. We raise ourselves up and receive healing for our highest good and the highest good for all concerned. We offer ourselves as clear and open channels for the highest forms of the healing rays to flow through. We give thanks that our personalities, egos, and expectations stand aside so the healing energies will flow in their clearest and the truest form. We share the light with every soul we meet. Thank you for helping us heal. Thank you that we are peaceful. Thank you for my many blessings. Thank you for the essence of universal love and compassion. And so it is, Creator, we give thanks for the blessings of this healing and we know that through our love it is done. And so it is, when you are ready, return here and now, refreshed energized, feeling loved, and supported by spirit. Namaste. Thank you for joining us and let's stay connected and grow in spirit. We are on Facebook, search for Unity Church of El Cajon, and follow us and like our posts. You can reach us on YouTube at Unity Church of El Cajon. Please subscribe to our channel, watch our videos, and leave comments which can help us improve. We are on the web at unityofelcajon.org. Email or call our church office to receive our weekly newsletters which lists all of our activities and opportunities to learn and grow together.